Hey y'all, Irix Guy here, and this is how to live stream using the Rode Rodecaster Pro in the Blackmagic Design ATEM Mini Pro. And before I proceed, I want to remind everyone, don't, don't worry about taking notes, because all you got to do is expand this video's description, and then click the link there, and you'll be able to find all the equipment and all the cables that I'm about to uh, explain how I use everything. You'll be able to find it all linked there. So the first thing, obviously, that you're going to want, if you plan to green screen, and again, this is optional, is you're going to want to, you know, paint a, uh, a green, a wall green. Now, I found that paint works better. You can get, and I've linked them within this video's description, a, uh, a green screen kit that's just like a fabric type backdrop. But if you want to make something more permanent, and in my opinion, something that produces more professional results, go with the paint. And, and I've linked uh, the type of paint that I use within this video's description. You're going to need good lighting, whether you're using a green screen or not. You will need, obviously, the Rodecaster Pro. And there's several things that you'll need for it. You're going to want a microphone. Although the Rodecaster Pro will work with third-party mics, the beauty of the, of the Rode mics with it is that, you know, it, it detects most of the popular mics. This is the Rode uh, Pod mic, and you can find it linked within this video's description. So you're going to want to plug your Pod mic in. Now, you can get a stand, that it, a mic stand that, that stands beside your desk. You can get them that are ceiling mounted. You can get them that are tabletop. I like the tabletop because this is a heavy base. You know, I can just, you know, minimize the amount of floor space that it occupies. You're going to need a pair of, um, you know, especially if you want to listen to your audio and make sure that it, that it sounds good, that everything's mixed properly. You're going to want a pair of professional headphones. Also, if you're, if you're bringing in live guests by way of, uh, you know, into your YouTube. And again, I use, I use this for YouTube live streaming, but you may be streaming to a different platform. But if you want to integrate live face on video guests, you're going to want to hear what they're saying too. So those, you know, those headphones are important. As far as cables are concerned, you're going to need a cable going from your microphone to your, uh, to your Rodecaster Pro. And we're going to go into the cable portion here now. So on the Rodecaster Pro, I got the power cable that came with the Rodecaster Pro. This is a cable I picked up. Again, all this stuff is linked within this video's description. But this is a USB-C to USB-C cable that I plug into my MacBook Pro. So, you know, if you're going to be if you're going to be pulling in, uh, say, you know, like Skype guest or maybe some sort of conferencing bridge, if you're going to be pulling those people in, you're going to need to have your uh, your laptop connected to the Rodecaster Pro. And we'll go into that in more depth here in a little bit. You're going to need these cables. This is called the Monitor Out. So this is the audio out from the Rodecaster. So there's a left and a right. You're going to need those cables because they run over to your ATEM Mini Pro. And in my case, I just put them in mic port number one. If you plan to, uh, you know, to use your smartphone, you can use Bluetooth. There's a Bluetooth option. But I found that I like to use a physical cable for two reasons. Number one, what if I Bluetooth and forget it and inadvertently share a you know a phone conversation on the air. So for that reason, I like to just be able to plug in before I start a live stream and then unplug. So this is just this type of cable and then that goes in, you know, I use an iPhone, so that's an iPhone type thing. Again, you can find all of this linked within this video's description. The next thing, and this is where it gets uh, gets a little bit interesting. So, you know, that's my, we'll, we'll proceed with the, uh, with the talk show desk, this is my talk show desk. We'll talk about all of it first. So this is just my MacBook Pro. This is my power cable for my MacBook Pro. We already discussed that. That's the USB-C that runs to the Rodecaster Pro. Now we're about to jump over to the ATEM Mini. So this cable runs from my MacBook Pro to the ATEM Mini Pro. And the ATEM Mini Pro has four HDMI ports. So that particular cable, the one that's running to the MacBook Pro, is my uh, is my what refers to as port number two 
on the uh, on the ATEM Mini Pro. So I'm going to show you, and this is why I went with ATEM Mini Pro versus uh, versus the ATEM Mini, the less expensive option. What you're seeing now is referred to as multi view. Now I've got multi view here, which is directly in front of my talk show set, so I can see this while I'm live streaming. But also out of the corner of my eye, I've got multi view over there. So you know how did I how did I get this on two monitors? Because you know the ATEM Mini Pro only has one monitor out. Well, that's simple, and you can find it linked within this video's description. I just use an affordable HDMI splitter to split what's coming out of here, out of the output. Let's see. The output is, uh, let's see which port it is on there. Oh, it's this port right here, the, the one that's out. So the out goes into a splitter, and then the splitter, one of the splitter ends goes into this monitor. The other splitter end goes into that monitor on the wall. So looking at the back of the ATEM Mini Pro, in mic one, I've got my uh, cable that goes to the Rodecaster Pro. In, and these are all one, two, three, four. They call them camera inputs. They're just HDMI. So HDMI one is my camera that I have up here. And again, you can find it linked within all this stuff linked within this video's description. So that's my that's my camera. Number two, as we discussed, that's my laptop. So it behaves like a secondary display. You know, if you plug an external monitor into your laptop, it, it functions and you can you can extend to that desktop so it's, it functions like a standalone space. That's how that works. Camera number three is, a, uh, is, a, is an Apple TV. Camera number four is an Apple TV. So how do I do, how do I use all of this? So I'm gonna explain here and I'm gonna show you within the A10 Mini Pro software. So preview is what I have before I go live. Program is what the people that are watching YouTube are seeing. These four boxes here, and the beauty of ATEM software control is that you can slightly rename them. So you can see I added camera number one. It used to just say camera one, but I, I put A7R4 out there, so I know it's my Sony Alpha camera. Camera number two says comp. I know it's my computer. It's my MacBook Pro. and and the computer's uh, currently in power saving mode, so it's just a blank screen. Otherwise, you would see the computer's secondary monitor there. It behaves just like a monitor. We're, we're going to tinker with that here in a second so I can show you how that works. Uh, camera three is what I call bid share. Um, that's one of my two Apple TVs. And the one that I entitled bid share, this is the one I use for intro and outro clips for my live shows. Apple TV two of two that's connected to HDMI 4, camera 4, it's what I call chroma, green screen. So all that it does is loops the video of my choice over and over, and that functions as the uh, green screen backdrop. Down here, you see your audio levels, and we're gonna go over to my laptop, and I'm gonna show you this a little bit closer up. Stop, that's recording. If you choose to use, uh, there's a recording feature built into the Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro. You can plug in like a like an external hard drive or external SSD and record your show. I personally don't record my shows because they just, you know, after I conclude a live stream on YouTube, they, they're uploaded to YouTube. So that's all I need. This right here, when you're live, <clears throat> I'll show you your uh, data rate in megabits per second. And this caching, if that starts to creep up during a live show, you're probably using a setting that's uh, too, a quality setting that's too aggressive for your for your internet connection. Because if that cache starts to build up, once it hits 100%, you know, your viewers are going to start to see buffering. I've got a slower internet connection, so I use the lowest quality setting. And I'm able to do hour-long broadcast without any buffering or without any caching. And the quality is still 1080p60. So I found that's more than sufficient. But if you've got a blazing fast internet connection, heck, go all the way up to the maximum quality. So now let's step over here. So this is, again, this is what they call the multi-view and then that's just a mirrored version of the multi-view. Uh, now let's step over to the software control piece. Oh, one thing I failed to mention. ATEM Mini Pro for the software control piece I'm about to show you. you you've got to have your ATEM Mini 
Pro connected to the network. So that enables two things with the ATEM Mini Pro. When I live stream, I use the ATEM Mini Pro to control the live stream to YouTube. So the live stream and all the chroma key ins coming straight out of this device, out that network cable to YouTube. The network cable is also providing the ability to, um, to use a software I'm about to show you, which is called ATEM Software Control. So let me fire that up here. I'm just logging into my laptop. So this is software, ATEM Software Control. And you can see here my setting for output is, uh, you know, obviously YouTube. It supports other platforms too. My server is primary and then I paste in the key, the private key from my YouTube account. And then I've got, like I said, I've got streaming low at 4.5 megabits per second, but you can, depending upon your internet speed, you can choose different speeds. Now see, you see the multi-view over there right now, you see all of the, all of the various things. <coughs> what you can do is go to output in your ATM software control and you can choose an individual monitor. So what I'll do during a live stream, I'll do camera two, which is my computer. Now see that over there now, that's just a, that's what the viewers will see. That's my extended display. So that's the monitor cable that I have running from my MacBook Pro into the ATEM Mini Pro. So to look at it, it looks like, oh, it's just a, it looks like it's just a monitor and it behaves the same way. So I can drag, if I'm, if I'm integrating Skype guest, if I'm integrating like say a, uh, you know, go to meeting or whatever type video conferencing thing, or if I'm just sharing slides, photos, et cetera, I can drag them to this monitor. So you can see, well, I don't know how well you can see it. Let me zoom. You can see my little mouse cursor moving around, see in the water. So I can, that monitor is large enough where I'm sitting at my talk show desk. I can, I can manipulate uh, what's being displayed on that monitor from my talk show desk here. So that's, again, that was monitor two from the ATEM software control output. Likewise, what I can also do is go, uh, I go up here to output instead of selecting monitor two. Again, multi-view is what you were seeing when I was up close, but I can select any of the outputs. So say I wanna look at my camera. I can do camera one. So there I am, and I can tell if I'm properly framed or not. And then, uh, you know, I can, uh, you know, I, I can see that up close. And, and likewise, I can go to what's called program view. So that's what the viewers see. See, right now I don't have any, uh, I don't have any, you know, green screen or anything. So if I want a green screen, and these are going to be separate tutorials, but I'll, I'll sh for the sake of fun, I'll show you the green screen. So the green screen is actually really simple. I've got my lights off right now. Um, so let me turn those on. Alexa, turn green screen on. So see, I've got voice control for my green screen lights. Now you can see that background and myself are both very well lit. So the way I do it is, uh, and again, I'm going to go back to multi-view here on the output. Because see, if you look, and again, cameras three and four, Camera three is what I call vid share. Camera four is chroma. So camera four is my green screen backdrop. So all that I've got, I've got a quick time video continuously looping uh, to, uh, to my Apple TV two of two. So if I select preview here, which is camera one, so that's my Sony camera that you see up there that you see me face on video from. And then I select, um, I go over here to palettes and then I go to chroma and then I do chroma sample and let's see now you can see so I've got to select because it's got camera fill source it needs to be camera one which is my Sony so I do Sony and now I do chroma sample and you can expand the size of this box here. I usually, for my setup, I usually go to about that, kind of go to my darkest corner. So now I did a sample from the bottom left corner of that. So now that I've done the chroma sample, all that I have to do is go to, uh, go to key, and then on air, and then select program four. So 
So see, now I'm keying, I'm chroma keying over there. And that's what the viewers see. So they see me in front of that continuously looping Apple TV video that's playing. So that's, you know, that's how I do the live chroma key. And then likewise, if I want to pull in a, uh, if, if I've selected an image, which I don't have right now, but if I select an image of like a PNG, then that's where I can go into here and go to uh, downstream keyer and add the, uh, you know, the PNG, like your channel name, your channel graphic or whatever, the lower third, whatever you want to call that. So, and then obviously the audio, uh, camera three is my intro and for, and, and I'll also use it for outro. So I've got AFE, which is audio follows video. So if I switch to camera three at the beginning of the show or the end of the show, you know, they're going to see that audio and obviously the audio is hot right now. You want to, I'm gonna slide this down so it so it looks so it sounds good for your viewers. So that would be audio follows video. If I switch to camera three, which is one of my two Apple TVs, the uh, the audio that I'm using for everything is mic one, which again the way I've got this wired up, mic one is my uh, Rode Pod mic that's connected to my Rode Caster Pro, which those cables are running it into the A10 Mini Pro. So this stuff may seem a little bit complicated, but in reality, it's not. Now, if I did have, which I don't, if I had soundtrack for my green screen backdrop, like maybe crickets chirping or you know some sort of nature sound, I could choose to enable the uh, audio there, which I do have it enabled. But since my video backdrop has no sound, there's you know there's nothing moving, whether it's on or off. See if I turn it off. There's nothing if I turn it on, there's nothing. Because the video that's continuously looping for the green screen backdrop has no audio. So, you know, you can you can tweak all of these audio levels within the ATEM software control. This is why it's so important to plug your ATEM, uh, you know, plug your ATEM Mini Pro into the network so that, so that you can not only, with the ATEM Mini Pro, stream directly to your platform, in my case is YouTube, but you can also load the ATM software control app and have very uh, nice control over the uh, over the audio levels. So, yeah, that's super important. And this is this may seem like a complex setup, but you know, once you start using it, you're probably going to get the best audio quality out there. I mean, this this thing is is broadcast quality audio. You're going to get the best quality audio if you choose to use a camera and lens like I use. Again, all of this is linked within this video's description. You're probably going to find that the uh, that the video quality is exceptional. So you're getting outstanding video, you're getting outstanding audio, and then obviously with your uh, you know your lighting's important. So I've been around the block with lighting, and you know these are the light panels that I finally uh, settled with, and I like them because they're not as bulky, and it's just a really consistent light. Um, that I can uh, that I can synchronize among all four of these or if I need to control them independently I can do that you know maybe my green screen doesn't need to be as bright as my as my two key light my, maybe my two key lights don't need to be as bright as my two green screen lights I mean you know that's just stuff you gotta you gotta tinker with in your space but to be able to to be able to create a convincing YouTube live show with uh, you know with outstanding audio and video quality I mean this is this is what I use. And this is the product of, you know, many weeks of experimentation. And, and the thing I like about this is that currently, at least, there's nothing that I have to, uh, you know, that I have to use a subscription for. You know, I, this is just, I bought it all. Um, yeah, it is a, you know, it is a hefty investment, as you can see when you, you know, when you check the link within this video's description and look at all the equipment. But it's something that if you, if you want to be as professional as possible, and you want to stay away from those software solutions that that often have subscription fees. You know, no, nothing wrong with those. I mean, I used Wirecast for a while, but I got tired of having to renew the support every year because if I didn't renew it, then Mac OS would often update and the software would likely no longer be compatible. So I was kind of stuck into having to having to continue to re-renew. But the awesome other thing about this, doing it in this way, is that you know you've got hardware. I mean, over there you've got your A10 Mini Pro which has four um, HDMI inputs. So, you know, again, in my case, I've got two 
Apple TVs that are, you know, one for playing intro, outro video, or whatever other video I may want to share with viewers. And then the, uh, you know, the second Apple TV that's doing my green screen backdrop. But you wouldn't want to have to, you wouldn't have to use it two Apple TVs if you didn't want to. You could have four cameras if you wanted to all be cameras. You could have, you know, uh, three cameras and one computer. You could have two cameras and two computers, or you could have a camera, a video game console, a, uh, you know, a, a computer's desktop screen share and a Apple TV, you know, however you want to do it. It doesn't have to be an Apple TV. I just used Apple TV because what I can do is, is open any video from my Mac and do AirPlay and select the Apple TV and then continuously loop it if I want it to loop or, you know, maybe I don't want it to loop, I just want it to play once. It's convenient because that way I can simply share a video and it's not, you know, often with the screen share. And again, I do share screen too, screen also, as part of camera two, but being able to just play a video, you know, when you're live streaming, the level of confidence is probably only going to play that video is fine. You know, anytime you're sharing the screen, something that you may not want to pop up during your live broadcast could pop up. And, you know, even if you've disabled your notifications, this, that, and the other, you know, something can always unexpectedly pop up. So the beauty of using the Apple TVs is that I'm just air playing a video. So whatever video I click is what, you know, what should appear out there for the viewers. So I like that. It's just very clean, very simple, integrates nicely with my, you know, with my Apple ecosystem. So yeah, I mean, this thing, this thing has been a game changer. You know, the Rodecaster Pro, a game changer for the audio piece, the ATEM Mini Pro, a game changer for the live streaming and input output piece, video input and output. So, you know, these, these two things paired together you know, are, are definitely, uh, definitely game changers. And one thing I want to mention, and, and I've got a separate video addressing this, but when you pair your ATEM, uh, you, you pair your Rode Podcaster Pro with your, uh, not Rode, Pod, Pod, Rode Rodecaster Pro, with your ATEM Mini Pro, when you pair that and you've got these, what they call monitor out, audio out cables, you're probably going to find when you first use it, that your audio has a buzz or a, just a really undesirable hum. And I thought something was defective. I replaced cables. I'm like, man, I hope it's not my Rodecaster Pro. Let me show you this. So when you're in the ATEM software control and it's hidden. So again, mic one is my Rodecaster Pro. You can see those audio levels jumping. That's coming from that mic. Um, mic one, and it's hidden down here in the bottom. See that little gear icon? You got to click that gear icon. And after you click that gear icon, you've got to go over to audio tab. It may default to general. So let's just say it did. So your own general, you click audio. And then see where it says set mic one input? By default, it's probably going to be microphone. Whatever mic, whatever mic input, whether it's mic one on your ATEM Mini Pro or mic two on your ATEM Mini Pro, Whatever mic input on ATEM Mini Pro is being used to connect directly to the Rodecaster, Rode, Rodecaster Pro, you got to make sure to change that to line. You can see mine's connected to mic one, so I've got line selected. If you don't have line selected, probably what you're going to find is that you're probably going to have a lot of buzzing, hissing, those types of sounds, and it's just going to be unprofessional. You switch it to line, dude, mine's crystal clear haven't had any issues. So that's just an important tidbit. If you haven't, uh, if you haven't discovered that already, that's an important tidbit that at least for me drove me batty for 48 hours or so until I figured that out. So yeah, so that's, so this is how I YouTube, this is how I stream live to YouTube with professional equipment. And again, I say professional cause that's broadcast quality audio getting broadcast quality video. I mean, this is, this is high end, you know, for most, uh, for most professional streamers or even, or even hobbyists that, you know, want to invest a reasonable amount into equipment to, you know, to take their quality to the next level. So again, I hope this video was a value. If you have questions, please ask, because I'm always looking to post follow-up videos. And again, for all of this equipment, just expand this video's description and then click the link there and you can find it all there. It's on my website, irixguy.com. I put together a very in-depth article with all of this equipment linked. Now, if there's a piece of equipment that 
you might want that I didn't link or whatever, just ask. And I'll see if I can uh, find a link for you and update my article linked within my blog article linked within this video's description on my website to include that item as well. So thanks for your viewership and be sure to subscribe. And if you liked this video, be sure to give it a like, share with others. If you really liked it and you want to go out on a limb and really support me, um, go to patreon.com forward slash irixguy and you can choose to uh, support my channel there. Again, completely optional, not required, but greatly appreciate if you choose to do that. Thanks for your viewership and y'all have a good day and tune in for my live streams and see all of this equipment in action.